Yes, hello. Hello. And welcome to my presentation, OpenModelica.jl, a modular and extensible modular compiler framework in Julia targeting modeling toolkit. And the Peter has already been so kind to introduce us. So let's start. Uh, so background, we will start by briefly going over the background. We'll then follow up with our research aims. And lastly, we'll go over the different components that make up OpenModelica.jl. Uh, so cyber physical systems modeling is getting increasingly complex, as always. Subsequently, this increased the requirements on tools, and uh, Modelica is currently somewhat limited when dealing with uh, highly dynamic systems. And recently, Julia has arrived as a new language for scientific computation, and as we've seen today, it has shown great promise. Because of, of, because of this, several researchers have started to implement different frameworks to achieve equational modeling within the Julia environment. Modia and Modeling Toolkit being examples of two such frameworks. Uh, all of these frameworks have used the EULA language to introduce novel features within the context of equational modeling. And some has already shown potential, as we have seen today, both in industrial applications as well in research. Still, these tools, while they're very in innovative, does not aim for standard compatibility. In this presentation, I will present OpenModelica.jl, in which we aim to make a standard compliant Modelica compiler within EULA. And we will show that it's possible to achieve such a compiler within Julia, while, while at the same time, we try to integrate these novel features of the wider Julia ecosystem. Um, so, um, so our research aims, of course, our long term is uh, supporting more dynamic and flexible uh, additions to the Modelica language. And in this paper, we will evaluate the use of modeling toolkit as a possible compiler backend. Um, so to give a brief overview of openmodelica.jl, uh, it's a Julia implementation of the OpenModelica compiler. We have different compiler modules. Um, so we have a lexer and a parser that uses Antelar. We have a frontend that is on frontend.jl. We have a backend that is on backend.jl, which is currently able to target both differential equations.jl and uh, modeling toolkit. Uh, we have a compiler runtime, which is the metamodelica.jl package, which mimics some of the functionalities of metamodelica. We have a couple of different intermediate representations from absyn to simulation code. And uh, the goal of this, of course, is to use this composability of Julia. And uh, conceptually, it should be very easy to add new backends to our frontend. So we currently have two bracket targets. We have uh, one targeting differential equations.jl and we have one targeting modeling toolkit.jl. And we now use the high performance frontend as uh, a basis of our Modelica frontend. And we wish to use the CIML infrastructure and the Yuli ecosystem for plotting and simulation. And of course, since we target Modelica, uh, graphical modeling tools such as OmEdit can be used uh, to model stuff graphically. And we're currently working on adding standard library support. So generating flat Modelica. Uh, since we translated the front end, the Modelica front end, it's possible to generate Modelica code using our Julia framework as well. Uh, and we can use this to check, OK, does the front end generate the same code as uh, the original front end in Open Modelica? So to the left here, we have a connector and uh, some partial models. And we have um, this multiple inheritance connect, which seems to have lost an inheritance here. And from this, we can feed this into our backend, and we get sorry, front end using the following API calls, and we can get flat Modelica back. And I will illustrate this in a new share. So uh, I think you can all see. Yes, does it show? So for instance, in our test suite here, we have the different tests. And of course we can run a command like include run test.jl. And uh, this is the front end test for a compiler framework uh, which shows um, the flat model again. Yeah, let's just hit the share. Right. And this is kind of the front end in action. 
uh, and the support of this paper, we wrote a new backend. We wrote um, a modeling toolkit backend. And uh, I will speak a little bit about modeling toolkit and I will speak about the backend itself and the little bullets about um, evaluating this new backend. So modeling toolkit, as we've seen previously, it's a recent framework for writing declarative equation-oriented code in Julia. Uh, however, it's not just limited to classic declarative equations. You can also do uh, parameter estimation and so on. And Modeling Toolkit is implemented in Julia, and several abstractions are provided via Julia meta programming. It also comes with several Modelica style compiler passes, such as index reduction built in. Uh, modeling Toolkit is the current new backend target for OpenModelica.gl. And to the right, you can see some examples of some Modeling Toolkit code that is automatic generated using our new compiler. Um, so the new backend in action. So to the left here, we can see a selection of different electronical components. And from this, we can use the front end uh, to translate it into MPK code. So what we first do is that we translate the code here to the left into flat modelica, and we then feed it into the backend. And back, we get um, a system in modeling toolkit mode, but now re uh, representing the equations in modeling toolkit instead of um, in modelica. So we can handle stuff like inheritance, connection, partial, and so on. And of course, it's possible to reuse existing models, uh, existing graphical tools, such as um, OMEDIT, uh, if you want to do modeling graphically. Uh, so uh, here we can see an example of a simple circuit. Uh, it has a resistor, a capacitor, um, a deductor, a source, and a ground. And uh, of course, compiled models can use the different features within Modelica, Modeling Toolkit, slash the Julia ecosystem. Um, so of course we have an initial scripting environment which you can use. And uh, to the right here, you can see at the top right, um, an example on how you could call this. We call on.run model, which simulates the model. As a mode, we select MPK mode to specify the backend target. And then we generate a plot based on this. And down in the right corner, you can see the resulting simulation of this uh, circuit. Uh, I'm skipping the demo now because I had some issues uh, sharing my terminal which is a bit sad. Um, so evaluating the performance of modeling toolkit. We evaluated this framework by running and by selecting one model from the scalable test suite. The goal here was not, of course, an exhaustive test. Rather, can we, well, we asked ourselves, can we select a configuration in modeling toolkits uh, that is not available in OpenModelica so that we can beat the OpenModelica compiler in terms of simulation performance? And the answer to this question was yes. However, there were some issues. When the system of equations grew large enough, we noticed that the compilation time of the generated Julia code increased exponentially. Uh, while we were able to generate code for up to uh, 25,600 equations, we were unable to compile it down to modeling to runnable code. And the issue seems to be that some operations in the symbolics um, did not scale, seem to scale very well in, modern, in version 5.16 of modeling toolkit. Uh, work is still ongoing, and we plan to update the version used in the backend to 6.49, which is now the recent release. And I believe that in addition, that the addition of um, symbolic arrays, as Chris mentioned earlier, in the Julia keynote, will be very beneficial in improving performance, so we don't have to scalarize the entire system. Because currently, the code generator is um, stupid. Uh, it basically scalarizes um, arrays into separate equations and variables. So um, we also were interested in just checking, um, can we use scientific machine learning techniques to accelerate simulation? Uh, so in this next section, we will introduce possible direction for future work, and that is compile time acceleration uh, within the model compiler. We will also provide some examples on how to use, how a nonlinear loop can be accelerated using neural networks to speed up simulation. Um, the use of surrogate to accelerate computational heavy model is not new. The idea is to replace computationally expensive components of a model with a surrogate model to reduce computation costs and consequently reducing the feedback loop for modelers. And we have seen several presentations concerning this today. There have been examples um, uh, using MDK that illustrates how to accelerate models by employing surrogates. Uh, for instance, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning model claiming a 590x speed up compared to Dumula. Uh, so we ask ourselves, is it possible to use the components within the Yule ecosystem to do compile time surrogates? Is it possible to introduce annotations into Modelica to do this? 
Um, we will present a brief experiment where we replaced a nonlinear algebraic loop with a surrogate generated using a simple neural network. Although uh, this is an artificial example, it demonstrates that there are possible gains to be had here and maybe an area for future research. So uh, to the left here, we have um, a nonlinear scalable that is a small model that we make that has a very strong um, uh, nonlinear algebraic loop. And you can see the figure or the graph of the equations um, in the rightmost figure. Um, so all the variables except y is involved in this algebraic loop. And uh, these algebraic loops can be detected statically during compilation time. The idea is to train a neural network to replace um, these algebraic loops to improve simulation time uh, during compilation time. So during compilation, we detected the loop. We collected all the equations and variables involved in the loop and generated a function to solve it. In this example, we manually generated the training data by solving the loops at the time points from zero to one using the Newton method. Then a small neural network was trained on these solutions to replace the Newton solver that is normally used to solve this linear algebraic system. Still, the question concerning replacing algebraic loops with surrogate functions need to be evaluated on more examples. This is an artificial example just to see, okay, can this be done as a compiler pass? Uh, so a direction for further work would, of course, be to examine a further application of these techniques in the context of algebraic loops or submodules, as Chris talked about earlier, maybe via annotation or compiler directives. Uh, that is replacing algebraic loops in uh, large industrial grade uh, differential algebraic systems with suitable surrogates during compilation time. However, we, we leave this future work or possible extension to what we presented here. Um, well, so conclusion of future work. Um, so in this presentation, we have presented a non-monolithic Modelica compiler written in Julia. Um, we have briefly touched upon the high performance front end and the improvements in flattening rate. And we can show that, yeah, it's possible to connect the Modelica ecosystem with the ecosystem of Julia and the ecosystem of Modeling Toolkit. Um, furthermore, we have shown that one can reuse libraries within this uh, wider Julia ecosystem to achieve integrated surrogate techniques. However, there are still several issues to be investigated in this area, and it's not the main purpose of this paper. It also remains to examine extensions to the Modelica language to enable more dynamic systems in Modelica. And finally, I plan to have the software release as an alpha uh, Monday after this conference on the 26th of November. And of course, uh, there are still some issues that need to figure out, and it's just a preliminary date because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so we'll see um, how it goes. But uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. I think this is the minute flat. Uh,